Welcome back, Mushroom Man Toad here. A lot of you have asked for it, and at long last, here it is. This is my complete guide to everything I know about right-clickable items in 1.13. In this video, I'm going to cover everything from the very basics of right-click detection in Minecraft, right up to custom hidden NBT on the carrot on a stick with custom textures, scoreboard tags, lore, and everything else I can reasonably think to do with right-click detection in Minecraft. I'm going to start with the basics and move up to the more advanced stuff as we go. So, let's get into it. So to start off, how is right-click detection done in Minecraft? Well, for those unfamiliar with the topic, right-click detection is done with an item generally used to ride pigs off of cliffs, the carrot on a stick. For some strange, wonderful reason, this obscure item has the power to detect right clicks while held and track them to a scoreboard. To set this up, you'll need the command on screen now. Scoreboard, Objectives, Add, Carrot, Minecraft.Used, colon, Minecraft.Carrot on a Stick. This will set up a scoreboard objective named Carrot that will increase by 1 every time a player right-clicks while holding the carrot on a stick. I've also just used this command in the other command block to make the score display on the sidebar so you can see how it works. This isn't actually necessary for any of the contraptions I demonstrate in this video, and in the final product, you'd probably not even want to have this display on the sidebar. However, it can be pretty handy for debugging. So now, to demonstrate, I'll just use the give command to give myself a carrot on a stick and right-click it to show that the score increases every time I right-click while holding it. Cool! So we have right-click detection. Now, onto how we can actually use this to our advantage. Over here, I've made a very basic contraption to demonstrate how to use these right-clicks. We're going to use the execute command to grab every player, that's at A for all, with a carrot score of at least one. This execute at player as player run execute as at S, which is the selected player from the first execute, is the syntax you'll need to make these commands multiplayer compatible. And yes, since the scoreboard tracks each player's scores to themselves, these contraptions can all be made multiplayer friendly. Anyway, I've just had this command say right click as the player who right clicked. You can put anything here though. In fact, one of the best things you can do here is have this command block run a function. Since the execute command syntax I've already used in this command runs as the casting player, the function can use at s to target the casting player without any extra work needed. I'll demonstrate this later on. But speaking of functions, for those of you who are really into those like I am, You'll notice that all the way down my line of contraptions here, there are no conditional chain command blocks. That means every one of these command concepts can easily be moved to a function without any fancy logic required. But back to the commands at hand. This second command block will just reset the caret score of every player who has one. If we don't have this block, then whatever you have in this first command block will just run forever. If it, for example, spawned in entities, the second command could be a really big mistake to forget. Always put this command or a similar one at the end of your chain of commands that you ran from the right-clicking player, unless you have a really good reason you want Minecraft to think the player is holding down right-click even while they're not. That said, this is the basic concept behind right-click detection. With just two commands on loop, and one or two commands for setup depending on how you count it, we've made basic right-click detection. I have all those commands on screen in order now. Alright, so this is great and all, but for most purposes, I don't just want the player to right-click with any old carrot on a stick. For example, let's say I wanted to make a custom staff of fire that the player can right-click to start a little fire. Now obviously, I don't just want any old carrot on a stick starting a fire. It should only be my custom one. So to make this concept a reality, we're going to start off the same way, adding a scoreboard objective called carrot that detects right-clicks. Now this time I'm going to give myself two carrot on a sticks. One will be a regular one, while the other will be named Staff of Fire. What we're going to have to do with our loop this time is try to detect whether or not the item the player is holding is my Staff of Fire. There are two main ways we can go about this for now, but I'll show the second way in the next contraption. For now, we're going to use a command that looks really long and complicated, but is mostly just repeated stuff to get this to work the way we want it to. That command is on screen now. So that command is actually pretty similar to the last one, just with longer target selectors. In fact, let's focus in on that repeated target selector. What I'm doing here is executing a command from every player, at A, with a caret score of at least 1, 
and who has an NB key tag with a certain selected item, which is the command block way of testing if a player is just holding a specific item. Here, I've told Minecraft to look for a carrot on a stick with the display name of Staff of Fire, but formatted with JSON formatting because they had to make it as impossible as possible. Wait. Anyway, there is one big disadvantage to detection based on the item name, and that's that item names can be changed on an anvil, so keep that in mind. This problem will be remedied in later contraptions. For now though, I've just had this command say Staff of Fire when I right click my custom staff. We'll get on to more complicated effects in the next contraption. Next, I'm going to want to remove the carrot score from any player who is holding the fire staff, because I've already used that right click, and I don't want it to potentially interfere with any other staffs I might have. For example, let's say I still want a generic carrot on a stick to say right clicked. So I have to first remove the carrot score from the player with the staff of fire, before running a detection from any other generic carrot on a stick right click. Finally, I'm going to remove the carrot score from everybody who didn't already have it removed for holding the Staff of Fire. Putting it all together, all four commands are on screen now. These past two contraptions have been the fundamental stepping stones for right-click detection. Now, let's move on to some more complicated and interesting stuff. First of all, again, set up that scoreboard objective. Next, we're going to give ourselves pretty much the same two carrot on a stick, but this time I've added just a bit more to the second one, giving it one point of damage and the unbreakable tag. What I've done here is I've used a resource pack trick called Damage Predicates to get a custom texture on my carrot on a stick. I'll put a link to a video by someone else that I used to learn about these down in the description of this video, which I highly encourage you to check out if you're unfamiliar with how to do this. It's a very handy trick. But anyway, on to the loop. As you can see, this first command is very similar to the one from last contraption. However, this time I've used a bit of a different tag for the detection. This time I'm testing if it has one damage and is unbreakable, as that's the only carrot on a stick that will have my custom Staff of Fire texture anyway, so this works. Plus, it gets around the whole renaming on an anvil issue. Now, I've had this command run a function, but I'll come back to exactly what that is in just a moment. Then, to remove the tag, I'm using the exact same detection as in the previous command, and the last two commands are pretty straightforward too, and let me have a normal carrot on a stick say right-clicked. Now, as for this function, this is a slightly modified version of a function concept made by NopeName, who I cannot plug enough for this amazing creation. Link on a card now, and in the description, to a video where he explains this concept in detail, but here, every time you see an example of a spell being cast in this video, it's a modification on his concept for ray casting. Right now, I've modified the output slightly to let me cast a basic fire spell. As you can see, this works for the fire staff, but not for the regular carrot on a stick. This is where these commands finally start to become very handy. But if you're like me, you can still see that this system isn't perfect. What if I want something like, say, an attribute system on my staff? Like, say I had a system that let me do some custom enchanting to get a frosty attribute on my fire staff, or a toxic attribute, or both, or even more, but I stopped it too because this is a proof of concept. Well, fortunately, Minecraft makes this surprisingly easy with a system that, as an added bonus, will display these attributes to the player when they hover over the staves in their inventory. This is done through the items display lore tag, demonstrated on screen now. Now, lore is super handy because each new line of lore is treated almost like an entirely separate tag, which means I don't have to write a custom detection and instruction for every possible combination, I just have to do it once for every individual attribute. I'm going to put the first three commands in this loop on screen now because they're all pretty similar and should be relatively self-explanatory. I've just added one of the lore tags to each of the detections and added a bit of code at the end to give the new outputs from Note Names Raycaster based on what attributes the spell has. I've just called one new function per attribute. After this, it's removing the scoreboard tag from every player with the fire staff and then the basic carrot on a stick saying right click that has been in every contraption thus far. So if I fly over here to my demonstration field with that handy reset button over there, I can show you that this works. First, just the normal carrot on a stick. It does exactly what's expected. Next, just a basic fire staff. Again, same as always. This time with Frosty. 
I had this attribute spawn in some packed ice around the impact location. As you can see, it places the fire as well as the packed ice, like how an attribute should work by adding things to the original functionality. Next up, Toxic places in a Poison 2 area effect cloud at the impact location. Now, I have no command testing for both of these lines of lore at once, and yet, when I cast the spell with both... So as you can see, this is a very handy concept, but it's still imperfect in two critical ways. One of these is the limit of the damage predicate, only allowing just under 30 different textures for right-clickable items. There's really nothing we can do about this until 1.14 without using some really tricky stuff that I'm not getting into in this video, mainly because I don't even fully get it. But this really shouldn't be too big of an issue for most projects anyway. Now that said, I've definitely encountered a fair number that have been restricted by this limit. But the final issue that I can think of with this mechanism is that I'm still forced to display attributes to the player. There's no way I've yet shown to make hidden attributes. That's about to change with the final contraption of this video. After everything we've covered so far, this isn't actually going to be much of a stretch at all. Just a little custom NBT. For our commands, the first four are almost the same, but I've added a new custom tag here at the beginning called isFireStaff. There's no more setup actually needed for this. Just saying that this is a tag that exists does the job. I've used this isFireStaff tag instead of detecting durability or the item name, just because it gives me the most control possible over the item. There is no way a player can possibly get this custom tag on the item without cheats. And although this is technically true for Unbreakable, you may want to have a version of your item that still has the texture, but not the functionality. Or maybe not. But either way, Custom NBT gives you maximum control. Also, it cleans up the target selector nicely later on. One final thing to note before we move on to the actual contraption, I still have versions of the staff with my custom lore attributes, but I've also made two staffs, these two, that have a custom NBT tag called Withered that's set to 1. This will give the staffs a new effect, but I'll come back to how that's used. So let's move on to the loop. In the first command block, there's a command that's very familiar, but a bit different and shorter than most of the others like it in this video. Here, we're just checking for every player with a carrot score greater than or equal to 1, and that's holding a selected item that's a carrot on a stick with a tag of is fire staff set to 1. And that's really all there is to detecting custom NBT on items. This is enough to allow you to detect if a player is holding your custom item. The next two commands are very similar in structure, checking if it's a carrot on a stick, if it's a fire staff, and if it has the attribute frosty or toxic respectively, and then running those cast functions. Detection of our custom withered NBT tag is extremely similar to the lore, just done how the command on screen now does it, checking for it right after checking if the player is holding a fire staff. And like lore, custom NBT tags can be tested for independently of one another or together like in this example. So you don't have to work out every possible combination of attributes. Just one new function per attribute. Finally, at the end, we have our carrot score resetter that makes this whole thing work. I've removed the extra bit at the end allowing a regular carrot on a stick to say right click, because let's be real, you probably wouldn't use that in your actual creation anyway. Otherwise, all the pig riders in Minecraft would have a spamming tool at their disposal, <laughs> and we can't have that. But that's it for the technical explanation. Download link to a file with all of the commands used in this video in a convenient .txt form, as well as all of the functions used in this video can be found in the description for you to play around with for yourself. But if you do use Nope Names Raycaster, at the very least go drop a like on his video about them. He's definitely earned it for creating a raycasting tool that's handy for, well, pretty much everything I've ever needed raycasting for. Okay, on to the fun part at the end. After creating all of this, let's see how our staff turned out. Just a fair warning, I've added some less than subtle effects to make this finished product pop more. Alright, let's do this. First of all, basic carrot on a stick. Nothing happens. Next, basic fire staff. Okay, frosty staff. Next up is toxic. 
then both attributes together. It all ends pretty much the same as last time, but remember, we're not detecting the staff using its name or other default MBT. We've got our own now. Now, let's use the Withered Staff. Yeah, there, we've got a fearsome uh, 1 in 20-ish chance to Wither Skull with 3 on your sword. Yeah. And also, just to show that it also works with the Lore Attribute system. Finally, this last staff is just to show that a staff that I didn't give my custom is Fire Staff tag doesn't do anything, even though it looks like the Fire Staff in all other respects. So yeah, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me down in the comments section. I hope you've learned something more about commands that you didn't know before. If you did, please make sure you hit that like button and do even consider subscribing if you're not already. Again, I want to thank you for watching. This has been Mushroom Man Toad, and I'll see you in the next one.